Let's talk about Owen. All right. Owen Knight. Owen is 30 years old. He is a college admissions director, I believe, for Tulane, uh, once the alma mater of Big Brother winner Ian Terry, uh, because I believe his Twitter handle is actually Tulane Owen, much like Tulane Terry. Mm -hmm. Uh, And yeah, Owen is a big, big fan of the show. Should explicitly be mentioned, RHAP patron, certainly uh, known in the community, Mm -hmm. has a very wide background. Uh, both, I think, reflected in the way that he's perceived as well as him preparing for this competition. Okay. Excited to see Owen here. Mike, anything else you want to set up before we listen to Owen? No, I think that, uh, you know, for a super duper fan, you may be surprised by his sort of background into the show. I think he certainly is of the caliber for the story, better late than never, and how it can apply to fandom. Okay. I see from the file sizes uh, that Owen has the shortest interview we're going to hear today. Yeah, but listen, you know, quantity over quality, or I guess the other way around. (laughs) All right. Here is Owen. Why are you here on Survivor? I'm here on Survivor because I'm a huge fan of this game. I've been dreaming about being on Survivor since I was a little kid, and I got to fall in love with it again as an adult and realize how complex and strategic and fun it can be. So I want to prove to myself that I can do it. What's your history with watching Survivor? Yeah, so like most everyone, I watched it when it was a worldwide phenomenon back in the day. I remember watching season two with my family in particular. I really loved Colby, watching him win all those challenges. And I used to daydream about myself, you know, ripping through the water, seeing my name in the opening credits, all of that. And I stopped watching, I think after Fiji, um, you know, middle school, high school, just got busy with sports. But I caught the premiere of Millennials versus Gen X on a plane. And I was like, oh, my God, Survivor is still on. It's so good. And, and like I said, I have this new appreciation for it, getting to fall in love with it again as an adult and really appreciating how complex of a game it is. So then I went back, watched everything, watched the international versions. I'm an RHAP patron, like full in super duper fan. I, I love it so much. Grace. Grace. Yeah. All right. Um, so, boy, uh, what what a turn of events is just to have uh, Millennials versus Gen X on a plane. Yeah, I'm wondering, was this an on-demand thing? Was this like a JetBlue happened to be watching watching in the fall of 2016? Or, yeah, 2016, and just like chancing upon it. Maybe Owen had been just finishing the finale of Big Brother 18 or something and was like, oh, I guess I'll check this out. And then you see the 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 monsoon evacuating everybody and the, the Triforce assembling mm-hmm. and David Wright plugging his ears when Wood's being hammered. And you're like, I'm back in, baby. This is yeah. my show again. Yeah, I do wonder if maybe like the idea of the theme uh, might have like uh, also been like a little bit of a hook. Yeah. I mean, listen, before I think sort of like the David versus Goliath, it was Millennials versus Gen X as a while for like that really great new school season that there was sort of like universal praise around. Uh, And also, listen, Owen, I'm so happy that you are here living your dream got some bad news for you about the whole intro thing Mm -hmm. you may have to look to fans to make that happen yeah okay all right let's go back to owen give me one survivor winner and one non-winner who you identify with the most for a non-winner i identify a lot with i'd have to say gabby from david versus goliath i was actually almost on that season so watching was a little bit bittersweet but she reminded me of myself in a lot of ways uh, her sense of humor, her ability to connect with almost everyone, her like drive and not giving up. Uh, I feel like we would be friends. Um, as for a winner, I'd say probably Adam Klein. I thought he did a great job of managing his threat level, being involved in a lot of what was going on, but not uh, being target number one. And I thought he was authentic. I thought he was genuine and seemed to be having a great time out there. What's your history with watching Survivor? So favorite moment, I'm sure everyone's going to talk about like Parv's double idol or the David's pulling off the blind side on the mayor of Slamtown. No. To me, I enjoy like the character moments almost equally as much as the strategic moments. So like anything with Penner, like him getting into it with Jeff or screaming back Denise when he was voting for Denise. My I love ass. him. Uh, Stacey Powell doing the, the Benjamin not coach speech. Just so many random funny moments over the years just really like stick in my brain. And I think about them all the time. Grace. What? Listen, with no offense to the others, you got to stand this answer. Uh, listen, we were just happy to, to not hear an Eric giving up the immunity necklace. Did not expect a Chucky the Cheese, Stacy Powell reference in mm-hmm. our interviews here. 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm glad uh, some recognition for the queen, Mike. Yeah, and it's also interesting given the track record so far because I do recall, Rob, didn't Marianne like know the entire Reddit copy pasta for that speech by heart? So again, this this is a moment that maybe shows okay, the iceberg of like super duper fan levels, right? Like if you are a stan of the Stacey Powell, Coach Benjamin speech, that means, okay, you get it. You truly, truly get it. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, let's go back to Owen. What's one life experience you feel has prepared you most for the game? I think my job has prepared me the most out of anything for Survivor. Working in a selective admissions office, like, it is very cutthroat, but I also have to bring a lot of humanity into it, focus on relationships, and I have to work with a wide, wide range of people. You know, it's not just the students. It's also their parents. It's also their school uh, college counselors, and they are coming from all over the country, all different backgrounds, and I am also in this constant game of shifting power positions where sometimes I'm appealing to them. I'm like, please, please come to our school, and other times they're saying, please, please let me into your school. Uh, so the power dynamics shift quite a bit, and it's never the same on any given day. So I think it's prepared me a lot for this game. What excites you the most about the new era of Survivor? The new era of Survivor is really exciting to me because as a super fan, someone who's like studied the game, it's, it's weirdly exciting knowing that I have no freaking idea what's about to happen to me. I'm sure Chef Jeff has cooked up some crazy, <laughs> crazy twists and like, I'm excited to see what happens. And in a way, it's like weirdly calming knowing it's about to hit the fan and I have no idea. So that's Grace. exciting in and of itself. Yeah. I'm just imagining now if the Jeff Pope show, Rob, and this alternate universe had taken off he, would he turn into a cooking show and become Chef Jeff, put on the apron for like a hot second? I don't know about the talk show. I mean, it feels weird that the show would evolve into uh, a cooking show, but I do love the idea. I wonder if Jeff would embrace it if instead of like uh, the monster, it's like, oh, he's got like a, like a mixing bowl and a <laughs> chef's hat. Like, uh, you, you'll see what I'm cooking up for you this season. Who wants a helping of blindside butter beans? <laughs> <laughs> extra vote at etouffee everybody <laughs> it's like being in a kitchen that you don't know he's like you're being at a tasting i'm gonna bring out something you don't know what's under the covered item when i turn over this hourglass and smash it with a hammer your time starts now <laughs> yeah i mean yeah he's kind of like maybe like the gordon ramsay oh i mean on occasion look you certainly have experienced moments right where he has cursed people out a la gordon ramsay on hell's kitchen <laughs> yeah for sure Okay. I, and Chef Jeff, I love the rhyming. So that's, that's yeah. a good one, Owen. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I think it's it's a fun idea that like, I mean, listen, we could also call this era of Survivor the kitchen sink era where it feels like with the production design, they kind of throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. And so bringing it to the kitchen makes a lot more sense than we might realize initially. If the game's too hot for you, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> exactly. Don't get burned. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Here we go. Drop the fork. Keep the fork. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think people will perceive you as? I think people might not know how to perceive me. You know, I've got the long hair right now, so I think I'm giving off woo in certain ways. But I'm also wearing glasses, and I'm Asian, so people might assume that I'm really smart. Um, I think the truth might be somewhere in the middle. I really want to have fun out here, but I am strategic. I am a smart guy, but hopefully people are intrigued and want to get to know me more. What type of player are you looking for in an alliance? Yeah, I think I could work with anyone. I've been telling myself, I think I do want a meat shield in a way, uh, which is not going to be a problem since there are some pretty fit people here, and I'm certainly not the most athletic person here. I think to me what might be important is a brain shield as well, uh, like Sophie talks about with Yule or her nerd shield or whatever, because for me, again, perception is reality. At wearing glasses, being who I am, I think people might perceive me to be maybe more schemy and sneaky and smarter than I actually am. So I want to keep someone smart in front of me, but also to work with them and cook up some fun plans out here. Okay, uh, Grace. Um, so we still have one more person to talk about here. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if there is a meat shield or a nerd shield for, for Owen based on uh, this uh, starting group. Well, we'll talk about it. I think the last person we'll speak about could possibly be the meat shield within this group. Yeah, brain shield, nerd shield, I'm not sure. Ellie certainly has the degrees, 
to yeah. make it come across that way. But I think as Owen himself is personifying, like he is somewhere in the middle. I just don't think there is someone as explicitly brainy as like a Christian out there. And anyone who is, mm -hmm. is very much trying to walk back that perception. Right. So I think he's more likely to find a meat shield than a nerd shield, at least in this initial group. How eager will you be to look for advantages in the game? I do want to find advantages in the game because it'll be better to know where they are. And of course, if it's in my own pocket, I'll know. But something that I've noticed over the years watching Survivor is that Asian people often get labeled as sneaky. So I'm not going to be the first one to leave camp and go run off and look for the idol. I do not want that label put on me. What's the one thing you told yourself you wouldn't do in this game? I don't know if there's anything I haven't told myself I wouldn't do. I certainly want to like play in a like fair and honest and open way and, and be kind overall, but nothing's off the table. First and foremost, I want to have fun and I want to win. And in order for that to happen, other people are going to have a bad time and lose. And am I going to be a total jerk about it? I don't think so. But at the same time, I need to be willing to do whatever it takes. Okay. Uh, Mike, there is Owen. Yeah, what so else? Good. I was going to say, what else do you want to bring in uh, from Owen's bio? Yeah, we got a lot more stuff from Owen to bring in here that I really like. Uh, so favorite hobbies, backpacking, hike, hiking, video games, and taking and coaching fitness classes. I do think the physical aspect is something that Owen doesn't really bring up in this interview. I know that he says like, listen, I'm not going to be the most athletic person here, but he talks in his one minute video about the fact that he has worked out a lot to be able to get here. He says, like, I may not look at it, but these legs have some gas in them. Uh, he used to play football in high school. Uh, so that, I think he definitely has, again, that, like, physicality to him that kind of never goes away. Not certainly not in, like, a professional aspect, but I think he's not too far removed from, I would say, those, those Friday Night Lights days. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is something we would never know from looking at you? That I'm a great public speaker and use my people skills at work every day. Asian men have certain unfair stereotypes associated with them, and I do not fit that mold. I played football in high school, was rush chair for my fraternity, and can entertain a room of 800 people. I use my EQ more than my IQ on an average day. So Rob, looking at all of this, he makes the comparison in the video, and that really just like set off a bomb for me. I see a lot of Malcolm in owen right now yeah a uh, lot of similarities uh long hair as well uh malcolm i think was sort of like an under the radar uh super fan also of the show so um yeah i mean that definitely seems like um like a fair comparison and um you know i, I think that uh, malcolm was i think a little bit more bro -y than uh than owen was where you know uh oh, malcolm yeah. was yeah looking to find like you know guys to work with uh seemingly although denise was his uh most famous there's a therapist here in this tribe mm. so um yeah i think that that is an interesting uh person to compare him to uh, I, I really do like everything that owen is putting out here i really like how much he knows the show I think from a physicality perspective, he brings a lot to the table. He definitely understands the game. You know, I, I like that he's not going to be like super advantage crazy. Like, I feel like if I was going to play, like, I feel like that I would not be super like, uh, oh, I, I got to be like, uh, you know, going crazy looking for the advantages. I kind of feel like that, you know, if you happen to come across them, you come across them. But I, I feel like that they don't necessarily bring like they bring maybe more problems than they're worth sometimes so yeah i i really like uh everything we're hearing from owen yeah i'll go back to his bio for a quick second why do you believe you can be the sole survivor instead of answering yes he has, says i can win survivor because i am an unassuming triple threat socially i'm likable and take a genuine interest in people i make people feel like i'm invested in them because i actually am physically i'm athletic enough to be an asset early in the game However, nobody is going to mistake me for Ozzy and view me as a threat to go on an individual immunity run. Strategically, mm -hmm. I am a Survivor Super Duper fan and have seen every season and watched the international versions. I have studied this game and know what works and what doesn't. Most importantly, I am pretty self-aware and know that I need to play my own game and go with the flow as the game develops. Now, 
this is going to be coincidental. I promise we're not sucking kneecaps too much, but like he has a lot of great qualities in a, mm -hmm. in a possible winner pick. And I think it's no coincidence that he has been somebody that a lot of people have been eyeballing as a winner pick. But I very much see a path here where Owen is able to utilize all these skills to put himself out in front. And then it gets to a point where everyone says, Owen really put himself out in front. He mm -hmm. could be the odds on favor, like we've seen in Malcolm's first two seasons, right? Where he just became too damn threatening in the end game, especially that they felt it was too much of the perfect package, if you will, to take out. And especially what we've talked about with this new era of Survivor, this idea of the tall poppy syndrome of these bigger players, bigger threats being cut at the mid-merge rather than making it to the end. If that trend continues, I could see Owen possibly not being able to mitigate his threat level and suffering as a result of that. Yeah, that will be something that he will have to navigate. He talked about the nerd shield. He talked about the meat shield. So I think that that's the way that he is hoping to be able to uh, navigate around that. You know, uh, we saw it come up even in Survivor 42 where Mike felt like, oh, I got to keep Jonathan around here. You know, okay. Uh, maybe I'm like a bigger guy, but if Jonathan is around, people won't be looking at me as the person who is the physical threat. So it'll be a problem for down the road for Owen. But I think for right now, I'm, I am I feel like it's clear skies uh, for the first part of the game for Owen. Oh, yeah, completely. Because I think he's definitely going to be considered an asset. Seems like he's also going to be, though, like very friendly and being able to participate in things. Maybe unlike someone like a Gabler, he'll be able to like, get in there and be able to to make moves with people and cooperate with people when it comes to strategic maneuvers. It really is the Goldilocks thing. And that's also something that I think really plays out well, not only in modern Survivor, but in Survivor in general is like, you, not, you don't want to be the best at one thing. You want to be at least pretty good at everything. And mm -hmm. I think Owen is one of those people and really I would say like the top quartile of this cast to me that really possesses that ability to be at least pretty good at every aspect of the game. 